Hey guys, it's really loud out there. I had to come back in here and film. I'm on my way down to the White House. Marine One is taking off. I might be able to get out to Andrews Air Force Base and see Air Force One today because there's a whole bunch of planes going to Europe. So let's go down to the White House. Eagle One, Washington Tower. Good morning to Washington. Altimeter 3013. 3013, which is the next West Zone 12 Eagle. Tower. Good morning, Nighthawk 1 at Anacostia. Nighthawk 1, Washington Tower. Good morning, the Washington Altimeter 3012. Proceed three. 3012. Proceed to 3. Eagle 1, Washington Tower. Good morning, Nighthawk 1 at Anacostia. Proceed to 3. Oh, decoy, decoy. Was the fountain. Here we go, guys. We got movement. Up. He's coming out the center door. You see all the press running? Yeah. <laughs> so the press is running to the center door, so we can't, we're not going to see it. Just want a close up? You can look here. Not a boy. Do you want to take a peek at this close up? Oh, wow. Whoa. Not this one, this one. <laughs> given the time, oh. it's most likely it was a middle door exit. Um, when he goes like, if he leaves at like 10 or 11, and he's been working in the morning, he'll walk from the Oval Office. And in those cases, we can see him just do it. But today, I mean, he just got up. He got up and got on the plane. But he doesn't get to Belgium until like 8 o'clock tonight or something. So it's a, it's a long day for him. And everyone's going to Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense. You guys got surprised by the cold weather. Hey guys, so a little editor's note here. Uh, today was a middle door exit. Uh, the president came out of the middle door of the White House, which is blocked by the helicopter. You can't see him. There's a helicopter in the way. But also today, 
I move locations. Normally I had set up to film the tail of the helicopter, but once I realized he wasn't coming out the tail, I shifted positions to get a better view of the takeoff. Luckily, I was in perfect alignment with the windows on both sides of Marine One. And you know what that allowed? That allowed me to see through the helicopter. And guess what I saw walk past the window? Take a look. Not spinning yet. Now, it confused me a little bit because in the first window, he walks by without sunglasses, but in the last window, he's got his shades on. And I'm like, well, how did that happen? So I went over to Bloomberg Quick Take on YouTube. Now, Bloomberg Quick Take is on the White House lawn for every Marine One landing and every Marine One departure. And they usually, usually put up a video. So I'm gonna put a link in the description and up here as well. You guys can take a look at what it looked like from the other side and you can match it up to what you see from my side. Also make note that the White House photographer's uh, little hair bun is visible just before Joe Biden gets into the first, uh, first window of the helicopter. And she's released her photo on the White House uh, website, which is pretty cool. All right, take a look. It's, they leave that way? Yeah, they've been going out that side. Here we go, it's spinning. Marine One, Washington Tower, Washington Optimeter, 3012, proceed as... Marine One, crossing the river, make the switch to Andrews, 18 floor, have a great day. Marine One, switch it, thanks for your help. So guys, due to the cherry blossoms, yeah, I ain't gonna make it out to Andrews in time for Air Force One. I just heard on Bloomberg Radio that he's already taxiing and I'm still a good seven minutes out if I drive the speed limit five, if I go a little faster. Up there, there's Eagle making its way back to base, which means the Air Force One is probably, probably already airborne. Uh, we've missed it. We'll see if we can get some of the other planes up. Okay, as of the moment, we don't see a track for Air Force One. They usually, they often take off and then turn the tracker on a few miles away from Andrews Air Force Base. So, that's not completely reassuring. Uh, we'll keep going. This is the uh, gas station just under the runway, the north runway. And we just learned from the trackers that the aircraft took off to the south. So we won't see anything. Bummer. I can hear the roar, but don't see anything. Oh well, that didn't really work, did it? <laughs> we tried. So the kids are home from school this week due to spring break, which means I have to cook lunch. And when I have to cook lunch, I just order out. <laughs> so there's a Thai place down here. We're gonna go grab him some food. Siam House. So before I run home, I'll point out this engine company number 28. A really beautiful firehouse built in 1916, I guess. But right over here at 3524 Connecticut, this used to be Yenching Palace, and then it was a CVS. And most recently, I think it was a COVID testing facility. But Yenching Palace has a very important role in the history of the Cold War. There it is. You see, it was here 
the Cuban Missile Crisis was solved. Yeah. There were emissaries from Russia and the United States, John F. Kennedy, who met here at Yenching Palace to talk about solutions to the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was the first entrees between the U.S. and Russia, though they weren't really official. And they took place right there in that old Chinese restaurant. So just across the street from uh, Yenching Palace and the fire station is Sam's Park and Shop. Yeah, just your standard little strip mall parking in front of a few restaurants. Except some architectural historians consider Sam's Park and Shop to be the first strip mall in the United States. This was one of the earliest examples of a strip of shops with a parking out front. And this was built, I don't even remember, was it the 1920s or something like that? And this, uh, this place is pretty historic. So as you can see by the wipers going, um, it's raining. My plan was to take you guys out to the Ever Given, the stuck evergreen container ship with my drone. Yeah, I brought my drone home to the uh, take out there. And unfortunately, drones just don't like the rain that much. So we're gonna have to put the, the flight over the ship on hold for probably 24 to 48 hours. And in the meantime, let's just drive down the street full of cherry blossoms. And simply because I couldn't think of anything else today. All right, guys, another day in the big city done and dusted. Hey, tomorrow, though, if the weather cooperates, we're going to go back up to Baltimore. And we're going back up to Baltimore not just for pit beef, which, of course, we will get pit beef, but because I brought this. Yeah, we're going to take the drone and we're going to fly out on the Ever Forward, the evergreen ship that's stuck in the Chesapeake Bay. And we're going to get a closer look. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow.